Welcome to another trip before, this time on a Freccia Bianca train. This is the lowest ranked high speed train you can find in Italy of the state of railway company uh, Trenitalia. I will tell you more about this in the video. I will be traveling to La Spezia today. I think the terminal station for this train today is uh, Genova. I will tell you more about this in the video. Anyway, in this video I will be showing you the railway station of Rome, Germany, where I'm at right now show you the trains, actually explain you about the trains and show you some views from the train. There will be another video where I'll be featuring the railway station of La Spezia. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up. And if you like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. For now, let's roll the intro. But before I start this video, a quick message. If you're interested in other trip reports, of course you can find them on my channel. But below the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map. And on this map you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes and the station and ferry icons do indicate the station and ferry terminal reviews. This channel is mainly focusing on international and long distance train travel to encourage people to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. And of course, because I'm making more videos, there will be more lines soon. We arrived in Rome by an Italo high speed train that came from Naples. I did make a video about it, so maybe it's already on my channel and otherwise just stay tuned. I will link it in the description of this video if I have uploaded that video. For now, let's take a closer look at Rome Germany railway station. This is the main railway station in the city of Rome. Apart from being the main slash most important railway station of the city of Rome, this is also a very important transportation hub. At the front of the railway station you will find lots of buses and within this railway station metro line A and B do call as well. Another thing you find between the bus stop and the front of the railway station is a huge taxi stand. The name for this railway station might be Termini and it might be a terminal railway station. This name is not referring to this railway station being a terminal station, but it's named after a district with the same name, which in its turn took the same name from some ancient paths. The Latin word for paths is Termin, so this is why it's called Rome Termin. Due to its location in the south, there are not a whole lot of international services from and to here but you will find trains to Munich in Germany, Geneva in Switzerland and Vienna in Austria from here. And of course lots of trains to Milan and Verona from where on you have good connections to neighboring countries. Apart from the taxi stand at the front of the railway station, at the side you also find a taxi stand and you can also enter the railway station from here. This is basically what you may expect of a terminal railway station. You find the tracks and at the end of the tracks you will find a lot of facilities. These facilities have been spread out over different layers, both in floors but also in different halls. Here at the lower level at the side of the railway station you also find a supermarket by the way. This might be one of the most budget friendly ways to buy some food or drinks for your journey. Although personally I really like the dining car experience as well. But not all trains do have a dining car though. The train we took does have a dining car, but we took it in September 2021 and the dining car was closed due to Covid. From the lower part of the railway station you can gain access to the metro of Rome. The metro of Rome is not really pretty, unlike the city of Rome. However, the metro brings you from A to B and it's quite efficient and affordable. So it's a good public transport system, just like the buses in Rome. For the lower part, I think you get it. Over here, you find a lot of shops, access to the metro, and lots of ways out to the main hall of the railway station. What is right here? Here at the left, you can see you can find access to the railway tracks. And if I move away from the railway tracks, you find again an awful lot of shops. At this level, you also find most railway related services. Most booking offices and vending machines can be found totally at the front of the railway station from where I entered the railway station. It's on the right hand side from where I'm walking right now. I'll show you a bit more in a bit. At the other side of the railway station, basically at the left side from where the trains do enter the railway station from, there's another entrance and exit. Over here you won't find a taxi stand because the street is a little bit narrower. So, back to the front of the railway station. As you can see here, 
Over here you find a lot of vending machines and a lot of screens with information about departing trains, what you actually find at most obvious spots here. Information with directions for example is of course everything in Italian, but in Italian railway stations English is also very common and you find a lot of information in English as well. I think this is a very good thing. For most long distance trains announcements are being made in English as well. From the front of the railway station you can enter an upper part and over here you find some restaurants and places where you can have a sit and a drink, as you can see over here. Although it are not a lot. There's another upper part where you find a lot more and that's a little bit more towards the tracks of this railway station. In terms of passenger volume this is one of the busiest railway stations within Europe. Different sources might give different numbers. But according to the source I used, this is the 8th busiest railway station within Europe, serving approximately 150,000 passengers every single day. This is the upper part that's a little bit closer to the railway tracks. Over here you find more restaurants and you have a great view on the railway tracks. Speaking of which, it's about time to go to my train. But before I do this, within this railway station you will find two railway lounges. One of Italo, what is a privately owned railway company that runs mainly on the high speed lines and on the popular routes. And one of Trenitalia, the state owned railway company of Italy. The Trenitalia lounge is being advertised with the name Freccia, what basically means arrow. Freccia is the branding for the high speed trains within Italy. You will find three types of Freccia trains. Freccia Bianca, that's the one we'll be taking today, Freccia Gento and Freccia Rossa. Apart from that, within Italy you also find intercity long distance trains. I will tell you a little bit more about these different types of long distance trains and high speed trains within Italy. But before I all do this, I have to go to my train. For most big railway stations in Italy, your ticket will be physically checked or you need to go through gates. In my case I had a QR code and I could hold a QR code in front of the gate and my ticket well, was checked that way. For the railway station of La Spezia where we went out there was no check for the tickets. However of course your ticket will be checked within the train as well. Most platforms are really at the front of the railway station. However our train departed from track 25 and this is a little bit more to the back so we had to walk quite a big distance. Actually, I was a little bit surprised by this, because it's longer than I expected. I speeded it up with 15 times, but eventually, here is our train. Today departing from track 25. At the beginning of the platform, uh, information screen will host route information. And for those of you who saw that this is actually not a Freccia Bianca, that's true. This is a Freccia Argento, but however, the route that will be taken today is being branded as Freccia Bianca. So there's a kind of Freccia Argento train with an identity crisis. However, this specific type of running stock is exactly the same for the Freccia Argento and the Freccia Bianca trains. This is how the Freccia Bianca trains normally look like. Exactly the same, but just a different color and also branded with the name Freccia Bianca. I recorded this at Cinque Terre and I also made a video about the Cinque Terre region. This will be a kind of a travel vlog, so it will be different from my normal video. Of course, on both Freccia Bianca and Freccia Argento trains you can also expect different rolling stock as what you see here, but this train type is being used for this route. By the way, I do have trip reports on exactly the same train types in different countries. Of course, the layout and the interior is different, but you also find these trains as the Alfa Pendular in Portugal and the Super City Intercities in the Czech Republic. In the Czech Republic these trains are now being advertised as Intercity Pendolino and there will be a trip report on that soon as well on the route from Gep to Prague on my channel. So it's no surprise these are tilting trains because the name for the trains in Portugal and in the Czech Republic are referring to this as well. Before I show the train I will tell you a little bit more about the different kinds of Freccias in Italy. The Freccia Bianca is the lowest ranked train of all. This train will only use conventional railway lines and thus have speeds up to 200 km per hour and is connecting major and bigger cities with each other. Then you find the Freccia Argento that will use both conventional railway lines and high speed lines. These trains will go up to 250 km per hour. And the highest ranked train is the Freccia Rossa. These are the high speed trains in Italy and these trains will mainly use high speed lines and occasionally conventional railway lines. 
These trains can go up to 300 km per hour and also have the most luxurious classes. During this Switzerland and Italy trip I also took one of these, so you can find them on my channel and if it's not uploaded yet it will be there soon. For now let's take a look at the outside of the train and after that at the interior. The numbers 1 and 2 at the side of the train do indicate the first and the second class. These trains only have two classes. A digital information screen will host route information and the train number. And permanently at the side of the train at the door you find the coach number. At the moment you enter the train you find the coach number as well between the carriages near the entrance doors. The second class comes in a 2x2 configuration. At some spots at the beginning of the carriage you find some space for luggage in some special luggage compartments. But you can also place items between the back end of some seats. Most seats do face each other. Of course there are also overhead luggage racks, but I do have to say the overhead luggage racks are not that big. If you buy a ticket for these trains, a seat reservation is always included. If you are traveling with the use of a rail pass, for example Interrail or Eurail, you are obligated to make a seat reservation for these trains. This will cost you 10 euros per person. We also did this for our trip. And of course, if you have a ticket for a local train in Italy, you cannot take these trains because there are different train fares. Train fares for these trains are based on the demand of passengers. So basically supply and demand. At the doors in each carriage there is some basic information about what facilities can be found in what direction. So you know if you are walking into the right direction or not. At the end of each compartment, both in first and second class, screens will host route information, timetable, weather and some general information. This will be given in of course Italian, English but also sometimes in simplified Chinese. Station announcements are made automatically and are in Italian and in English. Like I mentioned earlier on, in second class most seats do face each other. There is a big table between the seats, you can make it a little bit bigger and within the table there is a power plug. At the side you find garbage cans, all windows do have a sunscreen and the seat numbers can be found right below the luggage racks and are mentioned with the row and then A, B, C and D. In second class there are some seats that do come in an airline style or long distance bus composition. In that case you find a fold out table in the seat in front of you. At the side there is a power plug and a garbage can. And all seats, also the seats that do face each other can be reclined with the use of a button and the armrest. Between the first and the second class there is a dining car that was unfortunately closed at the moment I recorded this due to Covid. There is one part where you find a counter where you can pick up stuff and take with you to your seat. And there is also this part over here where you can have a sit and a drink and just enjoy the ride from a dining car. Although during the journey it seemed like some people went here to pick up some. Although during my trip a trolley came by every now and then as well for some drinks and snacks. In the first car carriage that's closest to the dining car there's a special room for the railway staff. As you can see here really soon on the left part. And as you can see here as well the first class comes in a 2 by 1 configuration. So two seats on one side of the aisle and one seat on the other side of the aisle. In first class there are slightly more seats that do come in an airline style composition. Personally I really prefer that. Let's do a quick seat tour of the first class. In the middle, if you have some seats in front of you, you find a small garbage can, there's a magazine rack, a bigger fold out table than in the second class, but you also have more leg space and the advantage you can pull it towards you. A cup holder, at the side you also find a sunscreen of course, just like everywhere in the train, and there's also a power plug over here. The seats can be reclined using the button at the side and you have a food rest. There's one bigger toilet that's also accessible for people traveling in a wheelchair. And you can turn this toilet into a nursery space for babies. This is how the toilet looks like and this is how you can make it into a nursery space for babies. It's not really special but it's a little bit more spacious than the other toilets. Close to this spot in the first class there's some extra space for passengers traveling in a wheelchair. This is also where you can park a buggy. And at the back of these seats there are some extra luggage racks as you can see here. The regular toilets, I didn't film them that well, but this is how they look like. 
They are a bit smaller, but pretty fine. Free Wi-Fi is available, although I didn't test it out, and this is also something that will link your device to an onboard entertainment system where you can watch movies, read newspapers, etc. Before I show you some views from the train, a quick comparison on this route, on the environmental impact. The left part is for the route that I'll be taking today, and the right part is for the entire route. As you can see, if you're traveling the entire route by aeroplane, the aeroplane is less polluting than if you're doing this specific section of the route. This is simply because the airport is in Geneva itself, and if you're traveling to La Spezia by plane, you have to go with other transports to La Spezia again. However, no matter how you look at this, the train is in any situation the most environmental friendly way of transportation on this route. If you're interested on the views from the train between La Spezia and Milan, check out the video on the intercity from La Spezia to Milan. And if you want to find out more about Cinque Terre, I will make a dedicated travel vlog for that area. So that's it for this video. I think this is a great spot to end the video. Right there is a railway station. Um, we stay here in an apartment right in front of the railway station. I think this is really cool. Anyway, I will discover Cinque Terre. These are the five villages. They're really pretty. Um, and the best way to discover them is by train. Well, basically the only way unless you go walking. But we will do some hikes as well. And we will make another video about this as well. Anyway, for this video, I hope you like it. If you do, so give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see the views between La Spezia and Geneva, just check out the video I will make on the intercity from um, La Spezia to Milan. There I will, well, this will cover that section of the route as well. And in that video, I also show you this railway station, which is La Spezia. In the Cinque Terre video, I will only show you this very briefly. Once again, thanks for watching and see you on my next video. But before I do that, I will show you some train spotting videos of these kinds of trains.
that's really it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you do so, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. This will all help the channel grow. A comment is also very much appreciated. You can also support this channel financially via Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash trainviking to find out more. Once again, thanks for watching and see you on my next video.